Hey everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show. I've been doing some experimentation with the iStar camera lately and uh, quite impressed with how it's been performing. Um, but one of the questions that I've had is how can I stitch the panoramic images of the iStar into a Faro scan? And the process is somewhat manual and you have to pick a lot of points. And so what you're looking at on my screen here is you know, one of the panoramic images with a whole number of points that are clicked, uh, you know, you have to click in the scan and you have to click in the panoramic image. So it's, it's time consuming. So I was thinking about how you can somehow automate this a little bit more. And so I've come up with a little bit of a, uh, of a method. And of course, this is sort of brute force uh, and, and very, very early uh, testing, but it could lead into some other uh, improvements in scene in the future, if you're, especially if you're working with a lot of uh, sphericals or panoramic images. So um, what I'm going to show you is the, the setup that you need first. So I've got the two images I'm going to show you. One is of the uh, eye star and one is of the base of the scanner here. And these are rather important here. Okay, so the first thing that's important is um, if you want to somehow automate this, you need to keep the relative position of the scanner versus the iStar camera the same. So what that means is you can move the setup, you can pick up the tripod and move it someplace else, take off the iStar camera, put on the scanner, scan, then take off the scanner and put the iStar back on. But the relative position between the two should not change. So what you're seeing here uh, is let's say look at the image on the right is I've got the scanner and I've got a little marker on the tripod uh, where I've said hey this is the center of the uh, uh, of the uh, the connector uh, for the uh, for the charger and this is where I'm going to align the scanner every single time just right at the center here and of course you know it, this is not a fixed hard point but it's it's pretty close so for the purposes of this test it's going to be okay the second part here is I've got the uh, the little yellow uh, marker again uh, where the focus was but what I'm doing now is I'm lining these uh, just just made some marker lines uh, for myself and also at the base I put this piece of tape here and I've just put a piece of marker or, or scribbled a uh, marked a line here so that I can align the rod to this uh, to the tripod uh, base and then also the uh, I star camera to this marker here so if everything is aligned then I'm good now this little yellow marker here was something else uh, I didn't remove it I probably should have so don't get confused with this I'm not actually using this I'm just using the little uh, black marker lines um, and this uh, triangular one which is on the uh, the uh, tripod base here so so long as I remove these and put them back in their same positions each time then I can reuse the picture fit in Faro scene so uh, let me walk you through a little bit about of the process here. So uh, first thing you would need to do is obviously scan. And once you bring in your scan, now I've got a couple of other images that I've been messing with here, and I'll show you the result and what you need to do. Um, but normally all you would do is drag and drop an image. So if I'll get any, any image here. Uh, this is an outdoor image. I'm going to drag and just drop it into the uh, structure view here and what it'll do is it'll come up with this menu and says hey what do you want to import this as just choose simple picture hit OK and this should import the photo in just a minute okay so there you go I've got a picture here this is the if I click on this uh, this is the uh, outdoor uh, photo that I've got so um, that's good that's where it needs to be so what I should do at this point, and it's very important because you will forget, is right click and go to the properties and then click on spherical. That's very important. And I'm just going to hit OK. So now it's set as a spherical. Um, I just need to um, uh, basically click and drag this into the pictures folder uh, under the scan. So I'm going to do that now. Hopefully it will cooperate. It's under the pictures folder. Now I'm going to open this up. So that's good. I have three photos. This is the newly uh, placed uh, photo that I've put in here. And if I go to its properties, you will see that the uh, spherical is checked, which is good. Now, I've already done a couple of images, and I'm going to uh, try to save some time here. But I'll show you how you would normally get started. So for the very first stitch that you do, and now what I did was um, I actually went into a, a room here. Uh, sorry. And you'll see that in this room, I've got a number of little markers that I've placed all over. I've put them on the ceiling. I've put them... Uh, on doors, I put them in all sort of different places. And this is so that when I scan it and when I take the panoramic image, I will have a whole number of discrete points that I can use uh, to mark and sort of make like a template that I can use later on. 
So I've done this already, okay, but what you can do if, if you wanted to is if you take the scan, when you have the photo in here, all you need to do is go right click and you'll see it says colorize scan. You click colorize scan, you hit the view button, and it'll it'll bring up a split window. I'll move this out of the way. And on one side you'll have the scan. Okay, and on the other side you will have the the uh, the photo or whatever. So um, so that that's how you would get started. And then when you hit select, the uh, the cursor changes and you start clicking on, uh, start zooming in on all these points and clicking and and matching with the corresponding po points. When it's all done, you hit OK and it will go through the process of colorizing and such. Now I've done that already. Okay, so I'm going to close this image and I'll show you one image that has been done and I've got the picture fit. So uh, my results here, um, I've got about uh, 57 points that I've matched between the two scans and I've got about a 10.2 pixel error and this is the first crack at it, first kick at the can, so it, it seemed to align uh, pretty well. So when you look at my points here, you know, you can see that they're centered uh, more or less, getting pretty close. You can see there's some error and it does a, it does a best fit, it does the best that it can, right? So once I have that, um, what I can do, so once it's all aligned and everything else, you go to your new photo, okay, so I've got this darker photo here, you can see there's a shadow up on the side, um, and I've got this picture fit. So what I can do is just um, control click the picture fit, drag and drop to a new photo. Now because I kept the relative positions of the scanner and the eye star the same, um, Nothing should really change, regardless if even the image changes, if the photo changes, and it's a completely new scene. So with this picture fit here, I just open it up, and what I'm going to do is just hit apply. I'm going to close these windows up here. Okay, this is a scan, and I'm going to hit apply. Uh, or actually, I'm just going to hit OK. And what this will do is this will run through and then recolorize the photo using the same picture fit that I used in a separate image. So I hope that's clear. Um, I'm just copying the, the picture fit or all the, the point matching that I did in one uh, set of images and scan to a new image. And it's going to reapply it onto the uh, scan again. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like after in the 3D view on the scan as well, because it's not perfect right now. So there's there's a little bit of spillage um, of color uh, over onto some other areas. But um, this is the this is the basic technique. And again, I'm doing this sort of uh, you know uh, pretty quickly here and, and not using uh, anything particularly accurate. However, um, it does mean that the potential is there to have a custom made bracket. And when you have this bracket that fixes the position of the panoramic camera to the scanner, uh, you basically have something that you could reuse. So once you build this template once, you can keep borrowing it again and again and again. Okay, so this is what we have. Uh, now what I need to do is I'll just look at the scan in the planar view. Now before we had, uh, it was a little bit darker image and we had a little bit more shadows here. And what I did was I actually just turned off the lights. Uh, in the rooms and just uh, use the HDR mode uh, for the previous picture. So um, actually, let me let me show you that. This was the previous picture, just so you can see the difference. You can see it's a little bit darker, and the iStar did a really great job of brightening this image up with HDR. I was very very surprised. It was a lot darker than than what you're seeing here. Uh, so to the to the human eye, it was much much darker, and this thing did a really really good job. So I was I was quite impressed with what the iStar was able to do there. Um, so this is the uh, the, the picture it's a little bit darker, the older one, and here is the new one that's now applied onto the scan. And so again, you can see it's brighter and that sort of thing. Now we can go to the 3D view, and I'll manipulate this a bit. So this is the 3D view, like that. Let me get out of the uh, camera's perspective so we can see this uh, a little bit differently. I'm just going to click on that, rotate that. I'm going to use the small point sizes, and I'm going to zoom in here. Let's see. Make sure I get in there. And I'm just using the arrow keys, uh, the up and down arrow keys to kind of move in and out. So you can see up on the steps here, uh, I just took one scan, but you can see a little bit of spillage over the uh, onto the steps from the uh, uh, this, this part over here, the white part. So it's not exactly perfect, uh, but you'll see that it is uh, possible. So with a bit better hardware, a bit better equipment, um, uh, with like bracketing and, and fixing those relative positions between the two, uh, the scanner and the panoramic 
uh, camera, um, you could do this automated. And all, all I need to do now is next time I go and take a scan in a uh, uh, outdoors or whatever, so long as I have my scanner and my iStar in their same relative positions, I can just copy the picture fit and I do not need to go through the whole process of marking um, and applying the, uh, the points to, uh, to an image over a scan. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.